Hey everybody, how are you? Today I'm going to talk about the Rodeve diode detector. Okay, what is the Rodeve diode detector? Well, it was invented by Constantine Rodeve, and uh, Rodeve can be considered the father of ITC. And what is ITC? That is instrumental transcommunications. So essentially, if you follow all those paranormal shows, it's uh, essentially EVPs, uh, electronic voice phenomena. It's the idea that you can hear spirits talking through electronics, uh, essentially hearing voices from the beyond. Um, so basically, Rodeve, back in 1971, wrote a book. It was called Breakthrough, an amazing experiment in electronic communication with the dead. And this was really the first book that talked about how you can use electronic devices to apparently hear spirits from the beyond uh, through electronic means. He talked about a variety of ways that you could do that. But one device in particular that he talks about is something called the diode detector. Now the idea is the diode detector is a device that can be used in place of a mic. Basically you build this device and you plug it into your recording equipment and the advantage is that it doesn't capture any ambient noise. Uh, essentially it, the, the way it works is, and I'll explain this in a little bit as part of the video, there's a, a component called a diode. It's a germanium diode. And the idea is that, you know, that coupled along with an inductor um, can capture, you know, just basically capture signals, capture sounds, and then not capture the ambient noise around the recorder. And then the idea is you can isolate and sort of hear, uh, you know, spirits talking, right? So that's, that's basically the idea. So, so how does this work? Well, what I'm gonna show you first, or let you listen to, is an actual recording that was released along with the book. And you can hear some samples of what, uh, what Rodeve captured when he was recording. In another recording, the experimenter remarks that people do not believe in life after death, and a voice answers, So sind sie. German, that's how they are. The experimenter calls on Vitaut's Simane, a friend who had died a short time before the recording was made, and receives the following answer. Danke, gute Morning. <laughs> then the friend gives his name, Vitaut's Simane. Okay, so how do you build this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of the circuit schematics. Um, in the book itself, he had a couple of different schematics that he basically illustrated. And, you know, there's some, uh, you know, some of them were looked at by engineers and, you know, the, the merits of each were discussed. And uh, I chose one of these to try out. I, tried, I chose the second one here. And um, there's been, uh, if you look on the internet, there's a couple of different versions of this. There's another schematic here. Um, I tried this one as well. And then, so essentially, how does it work? Well, the components itself, um, inside there, there's essentially a, a germanium diode and uh, an RF choke or an inductor. And, and that's basically it. You know, there's a resistor in there. And, you know, when, when you look at the circuitry itself, you know, it's suspiciously close to a crystal radio, right? Because, you know, I have a, I have a crystal radio kit here. And if you look at this, you know, it's essentially the same idea. There's a, um, there's a 
there's a diode that's a diode there on the side there's a tuning coil that's the copper there in the in the center and you know so when you look at the at the parts here that tuning coil is suspiciously close to what an inductor or a choke would do so you know you can argue that what you're basically what you're basically hearing with this device is uh, radio signals that you're capturing like AM and then you're hearing you know periodic um, periodic uh, signals coming through from the radio and you know there's this whole concept of pareidolia which is that you know you hear something and then the the, the, the mind tries to make sense of it and you, you hear words that might not be there right but I'm willing to suspend disbelief and I'm willing to give this a shot try it out so I built a few prototypes so I'm going to show you the prototypes that I built so the first one here so this is uh, using it's a very small choke that I bought and um, one of the things I did is since there's really only you know one two three four five components on here it was very easy to just create a, a PCB have it fabricated you know for the sake of uh, testing things out it's cheap enough I use next PCB so this is one version another version here you can see I have a different type of different type of choke that I'm using here in this case this is a uh, uh, ferrite, ferrite core toroidal type inductor. You know, all the inductors are 500 microhenries. That's what was specified in the schematic. This one, I have one that's sort of an axial version. It does the same thing, right? So, you know, a couple of things that were a little bit difficult with the setup. Uh, you know, it's amazing that it's only a couple of components. It's only a couple of components. So you would think that this would be, you know, fairly straightforward. Where the difficulty lies is actually connecting it to some type of device to be able to hear the, basically to use it as a microphone. So, you know, the idea here is that, you know, okay, connect it to your phone and then record from your phone. But when you think about it today, very few phones have headphone jacks, right? So it's an older phone, you might have a headphone jack. The newer phones have USB-C, you know, they have a, uh, you have to connect a dongle to it. And then, okay, well, if you connect a dongle, then you need a certain type of audio jack. And then you get into this whole business of TRS versus TRRS. You know, there are different types of, different types of jacks. So, you know, it, it became kind of difficult, surprisingly, to be able to troubleshoot this because the circuit itself might be working, but then just having the, the right chain there to get it connected to the phone was, was a bit difficult. So anyway, you know, ultimately what I wound up doing is in this case, I used, I used a uh, TRS jack and then I have an adapter that I use and I'll show you what that looks like as well. And essentially it connects into the phone, it splits the, the USB-C into a headphone out and a microphone in, and then I just connect that using a standard audio cable. So one of the things I did, so here's another version of this. This is my, my logo here. But the other, the, the, other, the other thought is making this in some type of enclosure so that this way I could bring it places. And uh, you can see in here what I did. Mounted the prototype in an aluminum box, which is uh, necessary because part of this, the construction of this is to make sure uh, that is grounded, right? So there's a common ground for all the components and uh, a nice metal box makes a really good ground. So you can see over here, this is the aerial or the antenna. It's about a three inch wire. Um, I just cut a hole in the box. So that's basically it. That's how this is built. So really, you know, the components in here again, there's just, uh, just a few. There's a choke. This is the choke. Uh, there's a germanium diode, there's a 100K resistor, there's a small capacitor for filtering, and then another resistor just essentially to, to provide enough resistance across the audio jack so that your phone can recognize it when it's plugged in. So I'm going to show you a few examples of what 
it sounds like and you know leaving it connected and uh, what I was able to hear once I had it all hooked up and one of the things that I noticed is that you know it's, it's a type of thing where it, it's not like you could just connect it hit go and then a minute later you've got something interesting to listen to you really have to just keep it connected and have it recording keep the input the, the volume all the way up or the the mic setting all the way up as high as you can and essentially just let it run in the background and then you know once you've done that what I do for testing is essentially I use uh, Lexus Audio Editor on my Mac. Um, that's how I actually can, uh, can uh, re well, actually Lexus Audio Editor on my phone. That's how I can actually get the recording. recording. And then on my Mac, I use Audacity for the editing. So, you know, that's it. This is just a really quick video. I just wanted to show you what this look like. Uh, what I'll probably do is, you know, take this out for a test. You know, I'll bring this out and bring this out in the field. Uh, I'll go to my favorite local haunted, in quotes, location, and uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how this sounds. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll report back and create another video. Okay, so that's it, guys. So thank you for watching, and take a look at the notes below to see how this was built. And uh, I'd love to hear if you try this out what your experiences are. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.